hospital, you'll meet people, we have clinic visits, we have all of this crazy stuff tomorrow. You will go all day long straight through till 7, 8, 9 p.m. tomorrow night. If you can make it through tomorrow, you can check the box, you would have made a big impact and you would have seen pretty much everything you're gonna see here. Then the next day we do the cultural day, super cool, super fun, a lot of stuff uh, lined up for you guys, and we get on a plane and go to Tanzania. Yeah, one. Yeah. How many <laughs> okay. Let us, let us say that you encountered a complication and that mother needs to have operation to have the baby delivered. Do you handle in here or do you refer him? We refer to the hospital. And how far is the hospital? <laughs> So you, uh, there is a, a military hospital that is up, uh, up cross. So after the market where we were, then you go ahead and then you turn. I think one hour distance. Ah, no, it doesn't reach an hour from here. So we can do that. So during the weekdays, it's all open. Only on the weekends, it's shut down. Even the weekend, it doesn't shut down, doesn't close. No, this one, like that. in case you need to visit the doctor or a clinical officer, do they have to get an appointment or what is how? They just come walk no, in. No, you just come, come walk, walk in. Walk yeah, you just come and reach here. So if you no, get disappointed, you get disappointed. You get lucky, you get lucky. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like if you came now, the clinical officer is not here because he has been working all the week. But so we don't. So we have a nursing officer. Do you have any working hours over the weekdays for the uh, officer, no, clinical officer? Okay, so they work from eight to five p.m. Uh, by then it is open, so the night hours is emergence and then later. So if someone has an emergency, they need to be attended to. Yeah, that's how they do it. If there's an emergency, they can call the clinical officer in the night? Because being a center, we don't have much here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But my time is just to refer. And not up front. So I will do my best to uh, introduce our group. Uh, and we're very, very proud to be here. The group that has come to you today is from a university in Southern California. Most of these students and faculty are working in the health field. And this is the first group of what we hope will be many groups who will come here and help uh, with the clinics and with the hospital as we move forwards to bring proper health care to the community. Please 
please stand up and show everybody who you are. Not only are we here to help with some of the healthcare initiatives, but we're also here to make good friends. And to build that community spirit and that sense of family, which is really what this is all about. I think one of the, uh, the people is scared. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So today we are so happy that you are here. The Lord himself has a good plan for you. I want to say also that I want to thank Nina uh, for uh, each of you uh, should have a copy of my PowerPoint presentation. WhatsApp. Uh, on it's already in WhatsApp. WhatsApp. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I just wanted to present uh, to you a, a model for transcultural, uh, transcultural healthcare. Uh, if you notice, we all use what type of standard? American standard, right? Mm -hmm. And we use our healthcare system and our standard to measure or to evaluate, to observe, because that's our perspective. The perspective that I'm going to give you is called transcultural perspective. Any questions, and policy, or comments? Again, um, you guys learning by doing already, and now we take into kind of like the theory actually trying to teach you this, which is you need to have four cultural dimensions. What are they? Anything. What are they? Skills. Awareness. Yes. Skills and encounter, knowledge, knowledge and encounter. Right. So you already have.